Hi, my name is Dr Lucy Richardson and I'm the Laboratory Director at Hearts and Essex Fertility Centre. The embryology team plays a significant role in your treatment and it's very important to us that all our patients understand the reasoning behind the clinical decisions we make. So today I'd like to talk to you about the science behind the scenes. The first time you are likely to meet one of my team is at semen assessment. You may be in a heterosexual relationship looking to start a treatment cycle. You may be single looking to preserve your fertility or you may be in a same-sex relationship seeking treatment through sperm donation or a surrogacy arrangement. Or you may be looking to donate your sperm to help with the treatment of others. We will first look at how your semen sample behaves as a liquid in the laboratory, assessing the viscosity or stickiness of the sample, as well as the appearance and volume of the sample. We will then take a detailed look under the microscope at the sperm cells themselves and we'll be assessing the number of sperm swimming and also their shape. We will look to see whether any of the sperm cells are sticking together as well as whether there are any other cells within the sample which may indicate that a chap has an infection. The final and very detailed test we perform is called an HBA test which stands for Hyaluron Binding Assay. And this test will tell us the proportion of mature sperm within the sample. This is important because only mature sperm can fertilise an egg. So if you have high levels of immature sperm within your sample, this could prevent you from achieving a pregnancy naturally, as these immature sperm are more likely to have damaged DNA or the wrong number of chromosomes. We think this is so important that we perform this additional testing at no additional cost to you. If you're looking to start treatment, the information we gather from semen assessment will guide us as to the best method of helping make sperm and eggs meet in the lab. If you're attending for initial investigations, we will be able to give you an indication as to where your sample sits in comparison to established normal criteria. We will be able to guide you as to whether your sample is suitable for freezing or cryopreservation if you're looking to preserve your fertility and whether your sample would be suitable for donation. We may be able to give you lifestyle advice to help improve your sample quality or suggest further investigations if the quality of the sample is particularly poor or interventions are required to recover sperm surgically. It may be that the best option is donor sperm and the embryology team can help and assist with finding you an appropriate sperm donor by matching with a donor from our own in-house sperm bank. Now we have assessed the quality of the sperm sample, the embryology team will guide the clinician as to how we can best make sperm and egg meet in the lab. If all the semen parameters are normal, we will recommend IVF. If one or more of the parameters are lower than ideal, we would recommend ICSI. And if there are a low number of mature sperm within the sample, we would recommend PICSI. Whichever way we recommend making sperm and egg meet, this will not affect any part of your treatment. On the morning of the egg collection, if you have a male partner, we will ask him to provide a semen sample for treatment. If you're using frozen sperm, either for your partner or from a donor, we will thaw this sperm for use with your collected eggs. Or if you're having a surgical sperm retrieval, we may also perform this procedure on the same day as your egg collection. We will prepare this sperm using a technique which will help reduce the sperm which cannot swim or are abnormally shaped in your sample to ensure we recover the best sperm possible for the use in your treatment. If we're performing IVF, we will mix a set concentration of swimming sperm with the eggs, leave them undisturbed in the incubator overnight so that the sperm can swim to meet and fertilise the eggs naturally. If we are performing ICSI, 
will give the sperm a helping hand, injecting an individual sperm into the egg, where the embryologist will select a sperm that is swimming well and is normally shaped. If we're performing Pixie, again we will inject sperm into the eggs, but we'll use a specialised dish to select out the mature sperm for your injection. The embryologist will come and see you after your egg collection and confirm the number of eggs you've had recovered and also the way in which we'll be making sperm and egg meat to achieve fertilisation. Sometimes we need to change the original plan. For example, if the sperm quality is poor on the day of treatment and it's nothing for you to worry about, it just means we adjust what we're doing in the lab to try and get the best result for you. At Hearts and Essex we grow, or culture, our embryos for six days of development and during this time we will observe our embryos undergoing some very important changes and by monitoring these changes it allows us to predict which embryo is most likely to give rise to a pregnancy. When we observe our fertilised eggs on day one they will still be at the single cell stage. By day two, our embryos should start to divide and we would expect to see somewhere between two, three or four cells and for the first time we can grade their quality. Overnight, we expect the embryos to divide again so that by day three on development, we expect to see somewhere between six, seven or eight cells. We don't assess embryo development on day four because the embryo should be undergoing a very important transformation and forming a structure called a blastocyst. Our day five embryos have undergone some impressive changes. The blastocyst will now have somewhere around 100 to 120 cells, which will have started to take different shapes. These shapes indicate what their cell fate could be. One group of cells forms a ball-like structure called the inner cell mass. These are the cells that will contribute to the fetus. And another group will form trophectoderm, which contribute to the placenta. At this point, a large fluid-filled cavity forms within the centre of the blastocyst, which pushes against the shell surrounding the embryo, causing it to thin. This will eventually allow the blastocyst to start to pop out of the shell that surrounds it, and this process is called hatching. This is necessary for the embryo to implant. The decision as to what day we transfer will be based on a number of factors, including the number of eggs fertilised, the quality of the embryos, and also the number of embryos that you would like us to transfer. A very big risk of fertility treatment for both mother and babies is a multiple birth. So wherever possible, and without compromising success, we will discuss transferring just one embryo. However, we can transfer two embryos in women under 40, and up to a maximum of three embryos for women aged over 40. For women using an egg donor, a maximum of two embryos can be transferred, irrespective of her age at treatment. We can perform fresh embryo transfers on day two, day three or day five and the lab team will guide you and advise you on a daily basis. The purpose of keeping embryos growing in the lab is for selection only. Sometimes that selection will happen at an earlier stage and if we can identify the best embryos for transfer on day two or day three, we will ask you to attend for transfer then. In some circumstances, it may be difficult to identify the strongest embryo at an earlier stage and we delay embryo transfer to day five. Patients, we may have more good quality blastocysts than we can transfer, so we can use a technique called vitrification to freeze our spare embryos for future use. We are very specific about the quality of blastocysts that we freeze 
to ensure excellent results for our patients. In our hands, an incredible 98% of blastocysts survive the freezing and the thawing process. Freezing is the exception rather than the rule, and approximately 30% of patients have freezing after transfer, and the most important part of the treatment cycle will always be identifying the strongest embryo to achieve a healthy live birth.